Hello and welcome. My name is Frédéric Heitzman. I am a researcher at CLAT in Grenoble, France. This video is the fourth of a series of tutorials on artificial intelligence. In the previous videos, we discussed the drive for machine learning and the widely used datasets. We saw across some examples and discussed the problems of bias and consistency. Now we are going to focus on models for artificial neurons. The basic element of a neural network is the neuron, of course. Do you know how many neurons are in the biological brain? It varies significantly, ranging from 10,000 for a snail to 10 to the power of 11 for an elephant. A human brain has fewer neurons than an elephant brain, about 100 billion. Note that some of today's processors, such as the NVIDIA RTX Titan, has more than 18 billion transistors, which is in the same order of magnitude. So what is the major difference? In one word, connectivity. Biological brains have massive connectivity between the neurons, combined with complex internal structures. Current integrated circuits do not even approach this level of complexity. Each neuron has an average of 10,000 synapses, which receive signals from 10,000 neurons. And that is a key factor which explains the incredible capabilities of the biological brain. This is why a bee with only 1 million neurons is capable of navigating outdoors, collecting pollen, building and organizing hives, and exhibiting complex social behaviors. Already in 1989, Intel processors had about 1 million transistors. Let's look at the biological neuron. At a high level, a neuron receives electrical or chemical signals, it integrates them, and then it sends some electrical signal to the next neurons. Looking closer, we observe that biological neuron sends many erroneous spikes when it should not and at the same time may miss many incoming spikes. Said differently, the biological neuron does not process information very accurately. Or in the information theory, we might say it adds a lot of noise. However, at scale of the full brain, this noise is not a problem. Furthermore, the role of this noise is not well understood. Some studies even suggest that noise is mandatory. For the biologists out there, this is really important area of research. In any case, many simplified models of the biological neuron have been proposed, so let's talk about these artificial neurons. The spiking neuron is the model which is the closest to the biological neuron, although much of the actual complexity is removed. The information is encoded with spikes, aggregated in synapses and sent via an axon. There are several variants depending on the membrane action model and the spiking model. The membrane can be integrated and fired, which means that the neuron accumulates the spikes into an internal reservoir until a threshold is reached. Then it triggers and emits a series of spikes or it can be leaky integrated and fired. The neuron still accumulates, but the internal reservoir is leaky. Furthermore, there are also stochastic models in which spikes are sent according to a probability. There are many other variants. For example, the spikes can be discrete or continuous in time, or they can be digital or analog. The spikes can transmit a value based on their frequency, or based on the time gap between the spikes. What is important to take away is that each variant models the biological neuron with different levels of fidelity, and thus these high-level models exhibit different properties. Depending on the use case, one can choose the model that best fits the application. However, most of today's artificial neural networks are based on a much simpler model, namely the McCulloch Pitts model from 1943, which is commonly called the formal model or the formal neuron. 
It consists of a weighted sum of the inputs, a bias, and an activation function. An activation what? Okay, don't worry, this is simple. Over time, several activation functions have been used, starting with the heavy side, also known as the step function. If the input value is negative, the output is zero, otherwise it is one. Other functions were used, and today the rectify linear unit is the most common. If the input is negative, the output is zero, otherwise the output is equal to the input. Mathematically, the function can be whatever you want, as long as it is a monotonically non-decreasing function, and preferably non-linear. And the artificial neuron is mostly a matter of multiply and accumulate. Said differently, if you know how to use the SumProd function in Excel, then you already understand a key part of an artificial neuron. Here are some of the key messages to take away. A formal neuron is an oversimplified version of the biological neuron. Good news, it is very easy to use. Bad news, many of the capabilities biological neurons remain to be discovered. Yet, we will see in the next video that formal neurons are very powerful when you gather them together in your own networks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please send me your comments and questions, and I will be glad to get back to you.